Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to this program today, the second day of September 2022. And where we continue the awareness exposition on the uh, dangerous diversity and why Nigeria can never work and it will never work. So we are going to refresh for a bit of All right. I believe that the audio is okay by now and uh, the voice is coming out very clear. All right. So the voice mm. and the sound is okay. Very fine now. Thank you very much, all of you. You are watching live and direct on Voice of Biafra 97.5 FM live and direct on Enter Biafra Channel 1 and 2 live and direct on all other autopilot platform, media platform, or social, different social media live and direct on Enter Biafra YouTube channel live and direct on our live streaming app. Enter Biafra Android, enter Biafra uh, iOS. All these apps are streaming this particular broadcast live and direct. And of course, I want to inform you people today that we have created a lot a lot of work to the enemies we have created job for the enemies and the enemy camp they are very very busy and uh, doing the job we gave them a few days ago yesterday we gave them job and uh, I will tell you that uh, they are doing that job very well. The job we gave them is that we will always give them topic to be discussing and analyzing. And they can never ever stay off from talking about Simon Ekba. They will always be talking about me, whether they like it or not. And any day I see that they are not talking about me, I will create another problem. I will create another topic. I will become so controversial. Controversial. I will make sure that I start creating more so that they will continue to talk while we focus on decimating Nigeria as we are going to do this evening. I want you to understand that it is part of this struggle. It shows that we are on top of the game. This is the game we are master in. We know how to play this game. So when there is issue of they are now folk trying to plan any evil against any of us, we need to create more violence in their camp. And that is exactly what we are doing now. And I'm very, very happy that the last violence we we created in their camp is working very well. You can see that even those who have not made brokers for a few months now or a few weeks now, all of them are out trying to <laughs> trying to analyze analyze uh, Simon Ekpa. So I want you all to just go to their platform, engage them very well. You know, engage them very well because the more they are doing it, the more they are advertising us, 
the more they are showing how competent we are, the more they are, you know, the more people are beginning, you know, because those who don't know what is going on, the more the people will come to understand that all these years, these people live with lies. All these years, what they do is blackmail and propaganda. They have never said any truth. They tell you we are whiter than white, all lies. So I want you to not worry about the blackmail. You can go and have fun. Go to their different platform, have fun. As you see them rubbishing their self <laughs> without shame. Okay? It is part of the game. We need to be creating this every now and then. And when this one is going down, believe me, I know how to <laughs> I know how to deal with them. Okay. I will create another one. It is going to continue like this, and they will never know their left from their right until the day we are going to mm -hmm. announce Biafra. I am telling you the fact. So we are going to continue like this. I will God will continue to provide a topic, a provide a they will use God will be using them to provide these things. So I will I will uh, always uh, strike at the right time. So I'm telling you now that we have been able to, um, you know, we have been able to disorganize their plan against uh, our leader's wife. We've been able to disorganize that. So that particular plan they have to use her uh, and shine can never be the same again tomorrow. <laughs> And that's why they are running mad. So, so go and have fun in their platform and enjoy it. But our message has been passed and the violence has been created in their camp. <laughs> I will move on. All right. This evening, we have come to, uh, you know, expose Nigeria. We have come to decimate Nigeria as usual. Our focus this evening is going to be on the dangerous diversity why Biafra must leave, why some other indigenous nationality in Nigeria should follow Biafra by 2023 when we begin to break away from Nigeria. I want to inform you all that you can see the alliances of this movement bringing every armed group in Biafra land together. We have succeeded in doing that. The only people that are not part of us are criminals. Anybody that is not, anybody that is carrying gun for Biafra is part of this movement. Anybody that is carrying gun to defend our land are all part of this movement now. I can assure you that criminals are not part of us. But I'm telling you today, every armed group in Biafra land is now under one command, one unit of autopilot. We have alliances mm. with all armed group, and I'm very, very proud to say it today. The alliances have been achieved 100%. Not with criminals, not with those who their primary objective is not to get Biafra. And I want to tell you today that our Bakasi Peninsula is going to be defended and from now going on will be secured. We are not ceding any part of Biafra territory to Cameroon. And you know that since some of you may remember that, you know, since uh, BNL came on board, you know that a lot of things has been going on. It is not a, it is not a business as usual. It is not business as usual. Since the BNL came on board, there has been a lot of uh, breaking news in that uh, Bakasi Peninsula, and uh, we are not going back. We just started. We just started. So that is exactly it. We also understand that uh, some uh, information has been passed you know, as we get uh, prepared for the Biafra uh, declaration and Biafra break away from Nigeria, uh, you know, some vital information is being passed to different uh, 
interest group in Bakasi Peninsula. And of course, as we get ready for 2023, while some people are getting ready to have election that will never happen in Biafra land, we are getting ready and planning our own. So, and that is exactly the way it is going to be. I want you to understand that the reason, one of the reasons why we are leaving Nigeria is because we want to have the opportunity to be alive. We want to have opportunity to be alive. Nigeria is going through what I call the journey of no return. They have embarked on the journey of no return. And this journey they have embarked on with all these uh, corrupt leaders, criminals in the government, bandit, terrorist, Mayete Allah, all these people that are parading themselves as leaders, especially from Biafra land. I don't care what is happening in other parts. But from Biafra land is where our interest lies on. So I want to inform you today that we are on top of this game. We are fighting the battle from all angles. We fight the battle within those who have been expelled, the criminals in IPOB that we have expelled. We fight the battle from those, the government agent. We fight the battle from the Fulani terrorists and those of them that are spending millions and billions of dollars. So I want to assure Biafras today that the Biafra people, those who are closely working in autopilot, are very, very focused. Very, 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 very focused. And uh, they uh, amended uh, information on the recruitment of volunteers to different department will also be published very soon. That uh, particular announcement, some edit has been made and we are going to publish it. And of course, there's going to be, uh, you know, a customized email coming very soon because we know that uh, a lot of people have complained about the Gmail that, uh, at, that were attached to that particular uh, announcement. And we say that that G email uh, is a temporal email. We are working on official email, which will be made available very soon. So the official email of this department, recruitment, volunteers in different department, Biafra government, will be made available very soon. So now we start on the exposition of Akaloka. Gideon Akaloka. I want you people to understand that the killing of Gideon Akaloka is one of the most, you know, talked about blasphemy in Nigeria history. And it, of course, it is going to be one of our, uh, you know, important topic. Our Enter Biafra app is on iOS and it is streaming live as I'm speaking to you. Uh, the comment will be resolved very soon. So uh, the commenting on that app will be resolved very soon. But you can uh, watch the app. You can watch the program from the app. And uh, it is just uh, as, uh, you know, it is even more better to watch in that app. So the iOS is ready and it is streaming live. The Android is streaming live and all the things is working perfectly well. So only that you don't, you don't make comment from the app at this point. And I believe that uh, in a few days or weeks time, that will be resolved. And so many things that the app has to offer will be fixed as uh, they are working day and night to fix it. All right. So let us uh, give you background of Gideon Akaloka. This story is a sad one. 
since it's part of history, we'll talk about it. I'm talking about the story of Gideon Akaloka. For those who care, these are the sites I got my resources from. Breathword.org, independent.co.uk, APN News, that's Associate Press News, TribuneOnlineNG.com, Sarah Reporters, and of course, Nara Land. Before the incident of Akaluka, there had been several tensions between young Muslims and Christians in the northern part of Nigeria. These Christians were Igbo who dominated Kano petty trading. After the Nigerian Civil War, many Igbos from the eastern part of the country migrated to various regions for greener pasture. Some of these Igbos went back to their business they left and ran back home during the war. Gideon Akaloka is from Ikeduru, Imo State. He was a trader and also based in Kano State. According to his wife, she was accused of using some pages of the Quran as toilet paper to wipe her baby's butt after defecating. This incident was seen by Alamajiri. Some sources say that it was seen by Marua, that's water vendors. And they say that it was the water vendor that disclosed what he sold to others. This made many Muslims angry, and they went after Gideon, leaving his wife alone. When those Muslim youths came for Gideon, he ran to the police station thinking that he would be safe. Police locked him up in his cell and promising that it was for his own safety. He was later moved to Goron Dissef prison as the tension was becoming very overwhelming. On December 26, 1994, Muslim youths around 1,000 came to the prison where Gideon was held. Some scaled the fence of the prison. They came into the prison and demanded that Gideon should be handed over to them. Police obliged and handed Gideon over to them. Those Muslim youths who were armed with guns, machete, swords and knives beheaded Gideon. They hung his head on a spike and paraded it on the street of Kano in a show. Though the prison warders never admitted that they handed Gideon over to those murderers, the prison warders constantly denied that Gideon was handed over to those Muslim youths. Mr. Haruna Sanusi, the prison controller, told Human Rights that those Muslim youths were armed with guns and machete and they held the prison warders hostage before carrying out the murder. Let me tell you the following thing about the story. Gideon was charged to court after he was murdered. They charged him to court for inciting public disturbance by committing blasphemy against Islam. Haruna insisted that the charge was before he was murdered, but many believed that the charge was just concocted to hide the incompetencies of Nigerian prison warders. Now here are some analyses I found on Naira Land on this matter. The person who analyzed this incident is a fellow Muslim. Who lived in Khan. He said, I attended Quranic school with my peers and held everything written in Arabic as sacred. I recorded anything written in Arabic alphabet as Sunnah Allah. If I was walking on the street and I saw a paper flying around with Arabic written on it, even if it's a mere instruction manual, I'll run after it and save it from falling into impurity. There is no way Akalukas would ever get hold of a copy of the Quran. No Muslim in Kano would ever sell them one, even if they are willing to pay millions for it. Christians were regarded in northern Nigeria as impure and unfit to handle the Holy Quran. Secondly, Muslims and Christians clean up in different ways after using the toilet. While Christians use tissue paper or even newspaper pages, Muslims use water or their hands. The idea of Akaloka using pages of the Quran for such an unclean business must have gotten many mad, but wait a minute. Using the pages of Quran for such venture is the clumsiest and the most inconvenient thing to do because there is a very robust Quranic handwriting done by seasoned Mahadatta, that is, those who have committed the Quran to their memory. These people calligraphed beautifully on locally used durable paper called holama.
Sorry about that. You've just listened to that. That was a very brief uh, story of Gideon Akaloka, <clears throat> a Biafran in the northern Nigeria state of Kano, how he was murdered for blasphemy. Now, I want you all to know one thing, okay? I want you all to know one thing. This particular killing extrajudiciously or extrajudicially, the people of Biafra did not end in the killing of Gideon Akaloka. I want to remind you that recently Deborah was killed. Although Deborah was not a, a Biafran, but Deborah is a Christian. Deborah was killed and murdered in cold blood for being ignorant of Islam. I want to remind you that those murdered in Yoruba church, in Yoruba land, in church, by the terrorists just a few months ago, we are also victims of blasphemy because they killed them in the church. So they shouldn't be in the church. They should not be going to church. That is the message. So it is not the last and probably will not be the last killing that will take place in the northern Nigeria. But I want you to understand that today, Atiku Abubakar is running to become the president of Nigeria. I want to inform you today that Atiku Abubakar shared the same ideology of killing Gideon Akaluka had it been that Gideon Akaluka actually used the Quran to, uh, you know, did what they accused him of doing, which he never did. I want you to understand that today, P2B is running to become a scam president of Nigeria. The running mate of P2B shares the same ideology with the people that murdered Gideon Akaluka. I want you to understand that even P2B go to northern Nigeria and speak ignorantly of the Islamic faith, he also will be butchered, even by his own vice president. I want you to also understand that the Tinubu and Shetima, you don't need to start talking about them because they are the now the sponsor of the terrorist Boko Haram and Islamic State. So now, how do you reconcile and be in one nation with people of this particular dangerous ideology? That is where we are starting this evening. And I want you to understand that P2B is not running to become the president of Nigeria. P2B is serving the Islamic State. P2B is serving the Islamic State. And P2B will continue to serve the Islamic State and, of course, the British government. So, on that note, I would want to bring up a video for some of you to see that the person some people are ignorantly supporting have actually started disappointing them. I want you to understand that those who are shouting on social media, especially those who claim to be social media influencers and all of that, most of them are not Biafrans. They are from a do beneath upward. 
And I want to inform you today that today they are very disappointed in P2B because we told them P2B is our brother. We told them P2B is a Biafran. We told them you we know P2B better than all of you from a do. All those, all those, some of them that are beggars in uh, in Italy and Germany, wherever they are, some of them that uh, that are on social benefit in their state of uh, abode in Italy, they are making videos and all that. Some of them in Nigeria that are into Yahoo Yahoo. We told them that Obi is our brother, and we know why Obi is going for to distract is to distract our Biafra, and of course. These people from a do state, they actually understand why Obi is going for uh, election. They actually understand mm -hmm. that Obi is actually a tool that they want to use to distract our Biafra struggle. So they embrace that particular Obi because they know that the real agenda of Obi is not to become a president. And of course, even when some people think that Obi is actually contesting to become president, them from Edo State, they are not supporting Obi because they want to vote Obi. On the day of election, they will never vote Obi. So, but you know what? Because it is very glaring. So when they saw Obi kneeling down for Atiku, portraying for Atiku, where they went to campaign and debate during the MBA conference. All of them got mad. So since then till this time, I have watched several disappointment video from this Edo people, from this Bini uh, hungry youth. They were making video and crying out how disappointed they are that Obi were kneeling down for Atiku. But when we were telling them about Obi, of course, they were never, because you know, they don't know how to defend that. You know, there are some things you cannot defend. Just like those defending Nigeria now, no matter how smart you are, any day you rise up to defend Nigeria, you become a foolish person. Because that you don't have any, there is no sense in what you are going to talk to defend Nigeria, and you are going to make sense. So they don't know how to defend Obi after watching Obi kneeling down to Atiku. So why am I telling you this story? I am telling you this story that OB portrays and kneel down to a man who are the same thing with the people who killed Gideon Akaluka. OB is kneeling down to the ideology of the people that killed Gideon Akaluka. OB is kneeling down to superiority of Islamic State. Obi is recognizing Atiku, who actually supported the killing of Deborah. Obi is kneeling down to show this idiot from Edo State that tomorrow, if Gideon Akaloka rises up from the grave, I am kneeling down to those who will support the killing for the second time. Obi is kneeling down and this idiot from Bini Edo State knows the implication of what Obi did because they know if uh, they are supporting Obi and Obi is, is kneeling down to Atiku, what, what message is Obi passing to them? What message is Obi, Obi passing? Obi is passing message that even if he become a president, he is still loyal to Fulani. Obi is passing a message that if he become a president of Nigeria, he will still kneel down to Atiku. And what is that telling you? It means that people will still be killed under Obi because he will be taking directive from Atiku as somebody who never ever can stand on his own as a result of inferiority complex, as a result of corrupt person. Because there are some things they know about P2B that you, these hungry boys from Edo State, don't know. So I want to bring this video before we go into the detailed analysis this evening. I want to connect this dot. I want you to understand that it is not only Gideon Akaloka that have lost his life for this failed and scam and fraudulent Nigeria. 
So let us watch Obi. How Obi portrayed to Atiku. There is something you don't do. So I don't need to, I am not coming here to, to condemn him for kneeling down to Atiku because we know who he is. And we know the mission Obi has embarked on. So I am not surprised. It's just that we are tired of watching one video of a comedian to another where they are saying Obi must go and apologize for kneeling down to Atiku. Obi must not kneel down to Atiku again. Obi must confront Atiku. These people are idiots because they don't know what we know. Obi is not contesting to become a president of Nigeria. Have you ever seen where somebody is contesting to become a president and is going to kneel down to the opponent? That is showing that you, you, know, you are not in the same level. And of course, because he is not the only person that is civilized and he's not the only person that have manners and have contested the election with other people that are bigger than them. So let us watch him. to Atiku. You know, I don't have problem, but I have problem with some of you that are complaining about Obi bowing down to Atiku. We, Igbos, we don't bow down to anybody. We don't bow down. We respect elders. We respect kings. We respect chiefs. Okay? We don't bow down to our political opponent. It is not the culture of Ndi Igbo. We don't bow down to political opponent. Never. But I want to tell you that Obi and Atiku, they are not political opponent. It is the more you look, the less you see. And this is what we see. This is what we know. And apart from the, even if Obi is genuinely fighting and want to become the president of Nigeria, the time is over. It is not what we want. So let us even assume that he is real. Let us pretend as if he is real. The time is over. Now, I want you to understand I want you to understand that OB bowing down to Atiku is not just ordinary. Okay? It is not ordinary. It shows you that some of you that have hope of Obi is going to do this for those who are genuinely out of ignorant thinking that something is going to happen when Obi become a president. This is the example. It's a very bad one. It's a very bad example. Hage will Obi, they will use Obi clean toilet. They will use OB clean their ass. They will use OB to mob Aso Rock floor. I am telling you the fact. But of course, we can never allow, you know, <laughs> you know, it is just, it is just very unfortunate that OB came at the time that uh, this Biafra has crossed the Rubicon. Otherwise, if it was like before, 
we would have given him a try. <laughs> okay? So it is unfortunate. He came at a very wrong time. A very, very, very wrong time. <laughs> he came at a wrong time. So, uh, and it is good that uh, everything is... And let me tell you, it does not matter what you say. He will continue to portray to Atiku. Anywhere he see Atiku, he will bow down to, to Atiku. So when, uh, if they decide to hand over the Asorok to him, what the see of Osibanjo, what Osibanjo is now, is if Osibanjo will have, will command more, more respect, okay? Osibanjo will command more respect than Obi. So I just want you people to understand, to see this thing from that angle. There is a video I want to, I want you people to watch. Okay? That is a video I want you people to watch. Because, you know, when these people are talking, we need more superior reasoning to decimate them. That is a man who is very well spoken. They call him Kachi. So let us go and watch his video. Remember that I am just I just started the issue of Akaloka. There are a, you know you know we have this long article that we are going to read. So if we do not have the time to read it today, we are going to read the article tomorrow. So it's going to be a continuation of this program. But let us go to watch this video. Kachi. Is it Kachi or something? Mind the country. Even the dots, begin the not. Okay, fine. Let us stabilize for the country. Well, I don't think this is uh, this thing. It's not difficult to understand. So that when we now practice national zones mm -hmm. in 2015 to 14, sure. some members of our party formed a breakaway unit called MPDP. They use that MPDP to bring in President Buhari. But then, and their own mantra was, it is turn of the north. It is turn of the north. MPDP brought in President Buhari. If President Buhari has done eight years, and has now weaponized the point in a way that could destroy the country, our governors have every right to come in to set purpose towards helping the country. What we've just done, simple, we forced a piece to do the right thing. National sharing of power is based on north and south. So the north has done eight years. If it is part of the MPDP that funded it, that done it. So MPDP members are now back to PDP since the Buhari has done the eight years. It is now the turn of the south to also experience it. That's why the zoning was done that way. And what was discussed was zoning. Secondly, our leaders, when they are giving duties to as part of what they do, and they have done that, and we've accepted it. One argument with our own PDP is that take a look at the 16 years the PDP ruled that more period was spent, you know, by someone from the south of the country. That's why I told you the PDP is a political party whose members in 2014 formed a faction called. MPDP. That MPDP went into a coalition with other Nigerians and better a president from the north. And that man has done eight years. So you cannot say that he does eight years. You now come and tell us that you don't agree with the consequences of those actions. No. That's how it should be. Now, so nobody is a fool. That Whatever is. MPDP does is also what PDP did. That's what we're trying to tell you. The eight years you're referring to yes. with President Momon Buhari, right? Yes. That's that's supposed to be with another position. No, no, it's not true. The, the APC is, uh, in that case, a halfway of the PDP members who wanted to bring a presidency from the north. And that's what they did. Okay? Without 
that the contributions of the MPD, their money, their funding, their behavior, Buhari will not be president. So what we're saying is, you don't do this, and then next time you now form CPDP, you also do the same thing. No, 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 no. Politicians must be willing to accept responsibilities for their actions. And that's what it is. Our members, I didn't say other people, went to form a party called APC. Who inside that place is not a PDP member? Tell me now. That is not implementing policies of the APC as a coalition. It is a agenda of the Mietzala. And that's what has gotten the country into its security crisis. So those pe people who brought Buhari to power has come back to us. And I will tell them, since you don't understand, let us also think this way. I think anything wrong in what has happened. Let us leave it at that. You know, trying to say anybody can do this. No, because the same people say anybody uh, can do this, anybody can run. And the same people that form the MPDP for the simple reason of being a president from the north. So, because of the weaponized nepotism and the way President Buhari has so dismantled and disorganized the country, you know, nobody that could come in and neutralize all that he's done. If not, the youth we move to the front and seize the ground, and we don't want the youth, because the youth will do things that could make the country not exist anymore. And we don't want that. The I actions of President Bugari, which is attributable to the decision by members of the NPDP to bring him to power, we see that. So don't tell me it's only this side. No. Whatever me and you are doing, and you go to do something else. When you return to me, I'll remind you of that thing you've done. So you're, you're clearly looking at a situation where both the PDP and the APC will be looking towards the South. That is what will happen with the shun of the PDP. So all we've done is to intervene in a way to save the country, not just the party. Do you think when that happens, your party will have what it takes to be able to um, defeat APC at the polls? Well, if APC becomes a political party then, they might then be able to challenge us. But today, they're not a political party. It is coalition. Once they won the election, they will trash them, threw them under the bus, and started ruling alone. And that's why we're saying those who made that decision undermine the country. Even though they thought they gained the north. Okay, fine. Let us stabilize for the country. Well, I don't think this is uh, this thing. It's not difficult to understand. So that we do this now, next time we don't set up presidents. Buhari would never have been president if members of the PDP didn't go to bring him to power. Taking a great good look at the political party as stands now, and if you go to election of 2023, where do you think your best um, level, so to speak, using ball um, metaphor, mm. where do you think, which direction do you think you should look at, you know, uh, if, you, if you are planning to win that election? Planning to win the election. If you are planning to win the election in 2023, yes. what should we do? Yes, strategizing to win the election in 2023 between the North and the South. You want to put your best foot forward. Where do you think you should take a look at? Right now, there is no argument about between the North and the South. The argument we have right now is between Nieti Allah and the rest of the country. You can to I want you to listen to that. The I have now is not about the North or the South, but about Mayeti Allah and, according to him, Nigeria. Now, I want you to understand something here. This man here, talking here, has always uh, spoken very sensibly. But he said something. He said that the problem now is Mayeti versus Nigeria, which is the Fulanis versus Nigeria. Now, I want to connect this particular understanding with the killing for blasphemy and the implication of that. So if uh, this man is only seeing as the problem man is Mayete Allah, what is the problem of Mayete Allah? Mayete Allah is the Fulanese. So when you talk about Mayete Allah, you are talking about Usman Danfodio versus Nigeria. So Usman Danfodio is Mayeti Allah. And they are actually doing what they did in Kano, what they did to conquer the Aousas. So it is now the, it is a reality that Usman Danfodio conquest 
versus the entire Nigeria. And do you think they are going to back up, back down? No, the answer is no. Now, let me tell you. This man says something very important, which uh, we, as we continue to play the video, you are going to understand it. So he said it is now that Buhari is representing and implementing the agenda of Mayete Allah. Now, if Buhari is implementing the agenda of Mayete Allah, do you think Atiku is not implementing it from day one? Do you think Atiku is not part of it? And if Atiku is part of the uh, uh, Mayete Allah, and Atiku is the NLP, NPDP that this man is talking about, because Atiku was the people that left to go and form NPDP to support Buhari to win the election. If Atiku is the NPDP as a member, this is not about the political party now. And Atiku is a Fulani man. And Mayete Allah represents Fulani. And Atiku has openly supported the killing for blasphemy. Considering the 1989 Abuja Declaration. How do you think that this man is actually seeing the future of Nigeria? No, he missed it. He identified the problem, but he don't know the future. The future is that that Islamization agenda is in the blood of every Fulani before you go to the every northern Muslim. The problem of the future is that the conquering of Nigeria is in the blood of every Fulani, including mm -hmm. Atiku. And for them to have gone this far, and for people be, to be so low self-esteem, and be full of inferiority complex from the secret we do not know, which only them know, of course we know it, if we want to start exposing them, will be bowing down to Atiku in the heat of campaign, in the heat of debate, in a venue where all of them came out with their best rope to convince Nigerians. Peter B bowed down to Atiku. He's the only candidate that did it. It is not modesty or modest, you know, being modest. No. But what I'm telling you is that Peter B, as far as Nigeria is concerned, will continue to be on that Fulani under the control of Fulani. So some of you that are thinking that Peter B, that is why he, he cannot mention Biafra with his mouth. He cannot mention Mazen and the with his mouth because he's scared. He is not running to represent you. The only thing he is doing is to drag Biafra name to the polling unit. And they will say, Biafra, uh, you know, the South is the door. Because you know now that is this narrative, which is very wrong anyway, this narrative of the agitators have not abandoned Mazen and the Kanu and they are following Nobi. It is wrong. Nobody, nobody have abandoned Mazen and the Kanu that is ag genuinely agitating for Biafra. The people that have done that are the criminals. The criminals that now want to invite the wife of our leader. They are the one who went into political solution. They are the one who are discussing with the governors. They are the one who went into agreement with Anambra State Governor, Soludo and all of them. They are the one that Soludo used to make sure that a election took place in, in, a, in, a, in a Anambra State. These criminals, and let me tell you, I have evidence. But you know, it is not your time. I know those who collected money from IPOB, the high rank officers. From a from, uh, from, uh, Saludo. And I know some of them who even have police guiding their houses from the high rank in IPOB. I know them. And some of them are running away today. Some of them are, you know, some of them are running, are running from, from the people that they, they misled. Some of them have camera everywhere in their house where they live and they know themselves they know the person the people know they are hearing me they know that i'm talking about them but 
is a shame. Because they know how genuine and serious I am in Biafra. They thought I have joined them so it will be business as usual. If what I am saying today, you think I am talking about you, then you know that you are guilty. <laughs> you know, there is this, uh, there is this uh, way the pastors will be preaching in the church. When pastors start to preach and be talking about those who are doing bad things, and it's as if the pastor is talking about you, then you know you are guilty of that thing the pastor is preaching. So if what I said now, you think that I'm talking about you, <laughs> you know, you think that I'm talking, then you know that you are guilty. <laughs> so, but if you do not, if you do not, uh, if you don't think that I'm talking about you, if you, after listening, hearing what I said now, you know, are you, you know, you don't, you don't, you feel, you know, you feel less concerned, then you are pure. So, but if you think that I'm talking about you, know that you are the one I'm talking about. And I know why I'm making it, I'm saying it this way, because the people know themselves. So, OB is bowing down to Mayete Allah, and the Buhari is implementing the agenda of Mayete Allah. How do you, you know, did you see the connection? All these things are just, uh, you know, they deceive you. The running mate of OB is from Mauritania. So he cannot come. His parent cannot come from Mauritania and have a, a built dynasty, as they call it. They even give them name. They say they have built dynasty in Nigeria. So they cannot come all the way from Mauritania. He come to become a vice president of Nigeria. You think he's the one who is going to stop the invasion of Nigeria by Fulanis? <laughs> the running mate of OB is not original Nigeria. They came all the way from Mauritania. Is it the one that is going to stop the Fulanese that are carrying AK-47 coming into Nigeria to do just like his father did? I don't know how, you know, are you connecting the dot? And let me tell you, it was a planned deal for, for them to tell Obi to pick him. And so all of you that, all those idiots that are supporting Obi, so I, you know, sometimes I have to use this word. It's not my nature, but I have to be using it. I have to be using idiots to describe you because that's what you people are. So how can Dati, the running mate of Obi, prevent invasion of Fulani to Nigeria if he become a vice president? Because that is what his father did. His father came and settled in Kaduna, in Zaria. And built dynasty in Nigeria. So how can he now come and become a president and tell Obi, stop the Fulanese from coming to Nigeria? You think that is possible? If you actually think that is going to be possible, you are the biggest fool. Of course, you are not a human being to start with. Because if you have brain, you will not be talking about Nigeria. So I'm not even talking, I'm not talking to you people. I'm not talking to all those Bini criminals. Because their support for Obi is a hatred to Biafra. What they, what they supporting, they are supporting Obi is not because they love Obi. It's not because they love Nigeria. It's not because they have sense. They don't have brain. The only reason they are supporting Obi is because Obi is going to, according to them, we distract Biafra. That's all. It is the hatred they show towards Biafra. I want you to understand that none of them has ever supported the Biafra movement or even spoken good about the agitators of Biafra. But immediately, Obi came out the wrong to punch on him. Let us support him. Let us support him. Let us support him. Uh, when the time to vote come, who will vote him? Who have time for that? So that, and the, when you listen to some of the fake Biafrans, because some of the people you see on Facebook, are not real. They have their friend name. All of them have changed. They created an account. Okay, Tuku. And when you speak Igbo to them, they don't understand. When you speak Efik, they don't understand. 
When you speak Ibibo, they don't understand. When you speak Akwaiba, Cross River, they don't understand those, those languages. So what I will tell you is that let us allow Obi, uh, when Obi, so that by the time he fail, their eyes will open. That is stupid. Stupidity in the, of the highest order. But no, we don't do gamble. We are focused. We have plan to get our freedom by 2023. We are not doing gambling. I am not a man that involved myself in a gambling of a plan. No. If I want to play gamble, I go to casino and play gamble. And if you do, if you go to casino, you know what happens in casino. <laughs> you lose. You win. It is not casino is not a guarantee that you go there and win money. There is no thing you do and you say this is a pattern to win. No. You, lo you lose and you win. So we are not here to gamble the struggle for the freedom of our people. We have plan, template that we are following. The template might not be the template used by Yugoslavia. The template might not be the template used by the Soviet Union. The template might not be the template used by Sudan. But we have our template according to this, the situation of Nigeria. And it is subject to change every day. We change it. We add something. We might not something. What we are doing to restore Biafra by 2023. Yes, we have the template. Some of you may understand that even they say they are going, they are going to rally. Did you see us talk about the rally again? No. Because we change what we have in the template, how to get Biafra. We are researching, we are not sleeping. I want to tell you that yesterday I slept for two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. The highest I have slept for one year since Mazen Namdekano was kidnapped is five and a half hours. The highest. And I hope I can sleep seven hours one of these days. So, when I go through the social media to research what is going on, I will see some of them. Oh, sit at home, it's not there. On oh, this one, oh, they're having a rally. They look at them, oh, so, and they're laughing at the autopilot. And they thought they're laughing at someone else. Let them wait. <laughs> we are cooking porridge for Nigeria and for Biafra breakaway. Our eyes is on the ball. Very soon, our porridge will be ready. And we'll begin to serve it. I am not hiding my mouth. We are cooking porridge for Nigeria breakup. And when this porridge is ready, we'll begin to serve them for them to eat. So now let us listen to this man. Well, well, it's not a political party, but what it does is agenda the meet Allah. So it is a meet Allah. Listen, because when you see Bill Skid just when you cry in the state, when you see the cat and the pencil complain and cry on Boom and Bila, you see that other baggy get killed in Kaduna. These are Nigerians. When you see the Wurkum, the Tanga complaining, Gombe, these are Nigerians. You understand that? So these people being killed, being ethnically cleansed, voices being heard across the country, represented by the screams and cries of Governor Autumn. A TV. I and think, that's how we're looking I, at I, it. And you think shifting power to the South will be the antidote to all of what you just said? Well, shifting power to somebody who will recall and reassert the Nigerian dream. Because the Nigerian dream is an arrangement that's inclusive of the diverse and you don't think that same person can still come from the north, even from Kassim State. Well, we believe right now, to be, to be honest to you, 
Nobody from the north can stop the Fulani insurgency. That's just the truth. So, Did you hear that? Nobody from the north can stop Fulani insurgency. So why do we have Nigeria? Why do we have Nigeria? You know, I want him to, he said, this is what I want you to understand today. He said, nobody from the north can stop Fulani insurgency. That is a fact. In fact, but I want to correct him. Nobody in Nigeria today can stop Fulani insurgency. No political party in Nigeria today can stop Fulani insurgency. So this is where he got it wrong. He only limited it to not saying no northern Nigeria, no northern political leader will can stop Fulani insurgency. This is a fact. But I'm telling him today, catch. Nobody in Nigeria can stop Fulani insurgency. You know why? I want to tell you the reason. And I want this man to watch this video and listen to my reasons. Why I said no Nigeria can stop Fulani insurgency. Why do you think no Nottana can stop Fulani insurgency? Because Fulani, because Nottanas are aiding them. Because Nottanas are helping and shielding and abetting them. Because Fulani are driving the Nottan agenda. That is why no Nottan leader can stop Fulanese. So, and this man, if he answered the question to why no Nottana or no Nottan leader can stop the Fulani invasion, then he will agree with me. Because the reason why they cannot stop the Fulani invasion is no matter how they pretend, the Fulani Mehete Allah, because when he talk about Fulani, he's talking about Mehete Allah, and when he talk about Mehete Allah, he's talking about the Fulani, they are all driving the Northern agenda to overtake everybody and take over Nigeria and turn Nigeria to a Fulani nation and turn Nigeria to Islamic nation. This is the agenda. Artiku is part of it. That is why Artiku cannot stop them. When you have somebody like Peter B to come and become the president of Nigeria, that will never happen. But let us put Peter B as a president of Nigeria. What makes this one think, this man think that Peter B, who is a minority, will stop the invasion of Fulani when his deputy is a Fulani man? When his deputy have a very bad history, when his deputy, the family and the family history of the deputy can also be equated to as as a, the a came to Nigeria as an invasion. It does not matter whether the father came to Nigeria to do cow business. It is part of it. So how can that vice president of OB will now be the one to stop? Of course, you said already that no Nottana can stop the Fulani invasion. So who is going to do it under OB? And let me tell you also that as OB, you see OB as a president, how can the National Assembly enact a law that will stop Fulani invasion? When you have the majority of them from the northern Nigeria, you said that no northern Nigeria can stop it. So who is going to vote for the amendment of the constitution or even the constitution, even if you amend constitution, uh, it is not going to work because they are not obeying the Nigerian law. They come with arms and ammunition, guns and bullets. So how will Obi now, you know, sack all the Fulani in the military? Who will make sure that you do not have any northern Nigeria to defeat and stop the Fulani infection? Why I am talking Obi, 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 because Obi is a Biafra. And he is not contesting to become a president of Nigeria. And even if you become a president of Nigeria, it is a cause that is bringing to the people of the Eastern region. Because the next thing is that they will continue to fight and kill like never before. And they will make his government ungovernable. And then before you know it, eight years is passed. Fulani can plan 100 years. How many years have it taken them now? Do you know when Akalaku, Gideon Akalaku was killed? 
Gideon Akalaku was killed in 1994 in Kano for blasphemy. False accusation. He was killed in 1994. Upon all the condemnation and all that, the person that killed him, Masnamande, the killing is called Sanusi. Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. Do you know what happened? They killed all the people. Abacha killed the people that were involved in killing of Gideon Akalako. They did not kill Sanusi Lamido. Sanusi Lamido was released after two years. Are you aware of that? No, you are not aware of that. No, you are not. You are definitely not aware that Gideon Akalaku was killed by Lamidi, Lamido Sanusi Lamido. He was one of the mastermind of the killing of Gideon Akalaku. So how do you how do you now reconcile this? And since this man have identified that nobody from northern Nigeria can stop the Fulani invasion. And I am saying that nobody in Nigeria can stop it. The only thing that will save the indigenous people and other nations, indigenous nationalities, is the breakaway of Nigeria. That automatically stop the invasion. That automatically bring the lasting peace we are looking, at, we are look, we're looking for. That automatically make the Yoruba nation to protect their border. That automatically make Biafra to protect their border. That automatically make the middle belt to protect their border or whatever nation that is going to come from there. Because by then, you are not going to have the influence of Fulani in those governments. And because by now, everybody must have learned their lesson about giving the Fulanis any chance. So let us go there to bring to you for your information. Yes, all you have forgotten, let us listen to this. Of our young professionals went to the Sudan. Many of them learned at the feet of Osama bin Laden, who was an exile in living in Sudan at the time, and a man by the name of Al Turabi, who was one of the opposition leaders in the Sudan. Many of our young people, young professionals, um, educated young men went there and came back to Nigeria with these completely unacceptable ideas about establishing an Islamic fundamentalist state. And you saw this thing unfolding by the day. Perhaps the most vivid example that I'll share with you today, as unpleasant as it is, is the experience of a man by the name of Mr. Gideon Akaluka. Now, many, many people have been slaughtered over that period, but I'm going to use this particular case in order to illustrate a point to you today. There's a man by the name of Gideon Akaluka who was in a Kanu police station. He had been charged with something he was being kept there. It was alleged that he used, he desecrated the Quran. I won't go further than that, that he desecrated the Quran. And the response of those that organized his murder was this. They mobilized the crowd. They stormed the police station. They dragged him out. They cut off his head. And by the way, they filmed all this. This was all filmed. It was released. It's something that was viewed by millions of Nigerians, Nigerians at the time on television. They put his head on a pole and they paraded it and started screaming and shouting and rejoicing at the fact that they had done this. And his crime was that somehow or other, they alleged that he had desecrated the Quran. The country was in a state of utter shock. This sort of thing had never happened. It had never been so graphic and people had not rejoiced about it as much as they did at that time. And of course, it had, these things are not often filmed. This one was filmed. And the people that filmed it were happy to allow the whole of Nigeria to see what they had done. Now, the result of it was this. General Sani Abacha rose to the occasion and they established the fact that nine people, nine people had organized this horrific act. There were nine of them. All nine of them had recently returned from the Sudan. All nine of them had trained there. All nine of them were committed 
to establishing an Islamic fundamentalist state in this country. And all nine of them were ready to employ violence in order to achieve their objectives. Are you listening to that? Now, all nine of them were trained in Sudan. All nine of them returned to Nigeria. Sanusi was one of them. And the, before this man, Femi Fanika Yode started talking here, you hear him mention Osama Bin Laden. Right? He talked about Islamic fundamentalists. Today, out of frustration, because of the policy of Fulani, this same man is supporting a fundamentalist, a Fulani Shatima, the running mate of Tinubu, who have the same ideology with Sanusi Lamido. The same man who formed and funded Boko Haram. The same man whose Boko Haram leader was found in his house. This same man who, was, who is telling you now that the fundamentalists, they came from Sudan, and to him, he don't support them today, out of frustration. Because the Nigeria is designed for you to be as a foolish as anything. No matter how educated you are, once you are in Nigeria's soil, you will become like Femi Fanikayode. Once you are in Nigerian soil, so many people, you will be useless. Your integrity will be rubbished. You will be struggling to survive. You must serve Fulani, lick their ass before you can be anything in Nigeria. Femi Fanikayode is a very good example because that is not different from what he's saying now than the person he's supporting who is a running mate to Tinubu. All of them are the same. In fact, Shetima is even, even more dangerous now than Senusi Lamido. Because Shetima, Shetima is the one who founded, one of the founding fathers of Boko Haram today. And he's very proud of it. He even, you know, he, he, you know, he then masterminded the Muslim Muslim ticket. This same Femi Fanika Yode left APC because he felt that what he saw was very dangerous. And he said, if we do not stop these people, they're going to kill other people in the north. And after killing them, they will come to south and kill us. What have changed in Femi Fanika Yode is frustration. And the Nigeria designed it. The Fulani designed the system to be like that. You know, I, am, I want to tell you one secret today that some of you don't know. Politician in Nigeria is, you know, politics in Nigeria is career. Politics in Nigeria is career. Just like some people made Biafra struggle a career. Politics in Nigeria is a career. And once you are not in politics, once your political party is not the ruling party in your locality, in your place, and you do not have the connection to the leadership of a political party, you become desperate and you can do anything. That is what Femi Fanika Yode is doing today because he is not part of the ruling party. And once you are not part of the ruling party, you begin to eat the money you embezzled before. Once that money is gone, you are desperate to do anything. You become poor. You can be gallivanting and all that, but you are poor. You don't have any authority. You don't have nothing. And power is what they need in Nigeria. You cannot survive and maintain your status quo without being having some power, commanding some kind of power. The same thing is happening to Biafra struggle. The people that we chase away and expel, the criminals, killers that we expel, that, can, that have killed our men just to make sure they control anybody that comes and do something they kill until now they are no more in control of anything. So we do you know what they do? They do everything. They do everything. When Samanepa give, give advice, they say Samanepa want to kill. When Samanepa, when somebody uh, steal car, they say it's Samanepa boys. They carry gun, give to people. They uh, they bring them together. They start shouting, "Are you Saman? Are you working for Samanepa?" Anybody that do anything, they say Samanepa. They will they, they go and organize boys themselves, and they say, "Will you say you are working with Samanepa?" You know, people die. They say Samanepa. People have an accident. They say Samanepa. They become desperate because you have removed the food 
from their table. They have no job other than other than this Biafra struggle. And that is why every time you see that, they say you are contributing money to Simon Epa. Because that is what they did. And now they say Simon Epa threatened to kill Mazin and the kind of wife. That is what they are planning. Anything you see these people accuse anybody of doing is what they are planning. And that is why she must be very, very careful about these people. They give poison anyhow. I am telling you today, from my experience so far, anytime they accuse you of something, they have done it. It is either that thing they are accusing you of is what they have done, or they are planning to do it. So our leader wife must be very, very careful where she eats. I am serious. She must be very careful. If they can, if they can sell, if they can sell her husband in Kenya, who is she? If they can betray Mazinam Dikano in Kenya, who is she? If they can accuse Mazinam Dikano of embezzling defense fund. Who is she? If they can make Mazinam Dikano to come to Nigeria in 2015 to prove a to prove a point and he was arrested, who is she? If they can attack Mazinam Dikano on social media after disagreement, who is she? If they can plan against him in his absent to destroy every legacy of Mazinam Dikano. Who is the wife to them? So I want to tell her, anytime you see that they are saying somebody is you know, planning against you or doing this, it is what they are planning to do. It is you that they are planning. It is them that are planning to harm you. And our leader's wife must be very, very careful with the people he mingle with and eat with. Very, 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 very important. Because this is exactly who they are. So I just want to give you the, you know, what is happening in Nigeria. So when you listen to Femi Fani Kayode, it's frustration. And he will do everything and anything just to be close to power. So he can be getting small money. Because there is no, you know, they can claim to have small petty, petty business. That business cannot give him the kind of money they get from politics in Nigeria. They make money. They embezzle money. You can just sit and somebody will give you contract and do this. You will be seeing billions. 500 million will enter your account. 1 billion will enter your account without doing anything other than you just know somebody and you give percentage to the person. That is why some of them will never ever want Nigeria to break up. It is not because of your, for your interest. It is not because they plan to build social amenities. It is not because they plan to give you a better hospital. It's not because they want to give you a better Nigeria. No. It is not because they want to secure you. It is not because Peter B is not coming to become president because he wants to prevent these terrorists from coming to Nigeria. No. He's coming, so he continued to kneel down to Atiku and continue to enrich himself. He continued to bring 200 containers in one week so that Peter B will close down, will, will resign from his container business of bringing uh, all these tomatoes and all that, and then hand it over to his uh, children. And then he will be in uh, Asorok and be commanding how the business will be going. So this is the thing we know. So what, how, how do you think you are going to convince somebody like me to talk about Nigeria? It is not possible. Because there is nothing you can talk about today I don't know in Nigeria. I read Nigeria like a book. I was talking with some, you know, some people don't even know. How do, you know, there's, I, I, I would tell them, do you know this? Do you know this? Do you, how do you know all these things? They ask me. And these are people who claim they know Nigeria. They don't know nothing. We study Nigeria. For you to be successful in this particular struggle like this, you must know the people you are fighting. You must know the system you are fighting. That is why I am winning these people, beating them with point black, beating them blue black. Because any move Nigeria make, I know them. I know where I know what they are intent to do. And I also know these criminals in IPOB. So any move they make, I already know what they want to do.
before I joined, I studied them. That is why none of them know anything about me. None of them. They don't know. Nobody know me. They don't know anything about me because I know who they are. Ask them today. Come and expose Simon Epa for one year. Nobody has been able to expose Simon Epa because there is nothing to expose. For one good year, the only thing you know is my face, my name, everything. You don't know me because I know these criminals very well. Only thing they will do is to come on social media. We are going to expose him. We are going to expose him. Come and expose me. I have teared all of you apart. I have destroyed all your criminality. Yet, you have not exposed me. And when I came to advise our leader's wife, it's because I know that is the question they are going to ask her. They are going to ask her a question. And at the end of the day, they are going to use that question against her. Or they are going to use the answer she is going to give against her. You can imagine, you know, she has not even appeared in Radio Biafra. They are already lying. They are already concocting because the, the main agenda of these criminals is to bring our leader's wife to Radio Biafra and they begin to ask, uh, how is uh, uh, Kano Takano, uh, uh, is Kano Takano your in-law? You know, how, do you, how did they treat you? They didn't... Uh, 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 we we understand that uh, uh, you know none of them have uh, sent you a um, uh, um, uh, uh, congratulatory message for your birthday. Uh, we understand that uh, you know they are abusing you. We understand that uh, you know you people are not talking. We understand all those nonsense. Or yeah, are they going to invite? You know what they are inviting her is to come and talk and say, oh, you know, some of them after we busted them, they say, oh. She's coming to tell, encourage Biafrans to continue, encourage Biafrans. I don't know. Encourage them. Who is she encouraging? Encouraging them for not obeying Mazenam Bekano's order. Encouraging them for destroying, trying to destroy the legacy of Mazenam Bekano. Encouraging them for tearing the family apart. I don't understand. So, you know, of course... <laughs> I am saying what I'm even this one I'm saying now is going to give her some kind of direction because you know left for me she shouldn't even come out to talk let it let her let her stay silent highest people will complain which they have been complaining in fact people are even tired those who complain complain they are tired she should just remain silent. Because what is happening have actually exposed a lot of things that her silence is golden. Her silence is golden. I am telling you. So what is she coming to say? She coming to say, oh, um, uh, you people must continue. Continue what? Continue the destruction? Continue the division? Continue the blackmail and slandering of people? Continue to fight the family of Mazinam Dikan because, you know, when you come to encourage Oredo Biafra, to encourage them Oredo Biafra to continue. What are they continuing? <laughs> you know, because I, I read uh, I read one of the, the, the Irat, the sewage rat, when they are trying, because we busted them, we have destroyed their plan. I am telling you the fact. Tomorrow we come, you are going to hear our leader's uh, wife speak if she go there. So, you know, and they say she wants to encourage Biafrans. Why would she encourage Biafra? Who is the Biafra she's going to be encouraging? Encouraging the Moreno Biafra to continue to blackmail the siblings of our leader. And you know, I don't I don't talk to them. I don't talk to them. I don't talk to Kano Takano since they use him to fight me. He even posted and tagged EU that Simon Epa is the one killing people in Biafra land. Did you not see it? But when it comes to protecting our leader, I know what to do. It doesn't matter. <laughs> when, when, when the Kano Takano posted and tagged the UN, and tagged the European, and tagged Finland, arrest Simon Epa, he is the one killing people. Did, you, did he remove anything from me? Am I not here? But now, there is time they want to scatter our leader's wife. I step in. 
irrespective of what what this or this non-entities are doing. I have done what makes me loyal to Mazin Namdekano. <clears throat> so if she come to say you people should continue what you are doing, uh, we, we, I am encouraging you to continue. So she must be very specific. Because if she did that, it means that she is also encouraging the attack against the siblings of Mazin Namdekano. I am only, I am, what I'm doing now is a vision. It's like a prophecy. I am telling you, it's a prophecy. The silent for 15 months is golden. She should maintain that silent. Because now that they are attacking each other, I cannot, I cannot, they have said cannot, I cannot is not a family of uh, and let me tell you people this criminals you know that uh, that uh, that non-entity in america they brought to they are parading in social media saying he is from the same village he is from the same country or the same state or with mazinam the Kano. is the people when they are you know positioning the people that are loyal are going to be loyal to the criminal in switzerland the one they call chike the criminal he positioned the people that will disobey Mazen Namdekano. He positioned the people that will never regard Mazen Namdekano. And they are now on the family. After he has appointed them in America, appointed them in the United Kingdom, all of them, the time has come to wage war against the family. And they are doing it perfectly well. So now, they are, they are going to, they tell you it's not, if Kano Takano, what is the business of Kano Takano being a brother of Mazinam the Kano and not being a brother of Mazinam? What, what does, what business does he have to do with Biafra struggle? What business does he have to do with Biafra struggle? It is a preparation to bring tearing apart of the family. I am telling you today, it does not matter the kind of attack they gave me, even the family, it does not matter the kind of uh, blackmail they, they included those in Germany. So today they are still looking for something to use to blackmail me. But I know myself. They can blackmail me. I will take it. They can let me continue to be the center of attention. Let Simon Epa continue because this blackmail is promoting me. I have come to know that. But let them not go into the family of our leader. Especially, uh, you know, you know when they, it, let me tell you people, if they continue to talk about Kano Takano, talk about Emmanuel Okano, talk about uh, he's not a bro blood brother, I will not talk. I will never speak. But I know, I know what they are looking for. Bringing the leader wife. And they will be asking questions because it is now they know they come, come and they validate us. Come and validate us. And the one thing is that, you know, they are not even going to, even when our leader's wife is not going to say something, they will twist that thing. The one she said, they will twist it to be something else. The people that doesn't have shame, that is what I am trying to prevent. And I said, if she can come and talk about autopilot, speak against autopilot, that we are doing something that is not good. Let her come and talk. If you want to talk about Samonepa, that Samonepa is doing something contrary to what the husband, which is our leader, have done in the past, let her come and talk. I will take it. But don't discuss your family. Don't discuss your family because they are looking for a way to tear you apart. And they will use it after three months. Everything you say will be twisted. That is why I said, do not answer any question about your family. Now I am saying this thing, I'm not protecting Kanon Takano. I'm not, I don't have anything, you know, I'm not protecting Emmanuel or Kano. I know a lot of people will be surprised. But this is what is right that I'm doing here preventing 
you know, because I know these people, preventing what they want to do, preventing the disaster, because they know that the money is not coming to them anymore. And they are not happy with Mazen Amdikano. Some of the decisions he made, they are not happy. Some of the decisions Mazen Namdekanu made is haunting them. They are not happy. So I want you people to, why I'm saying this story is that I want you to understand what frustration can cause people to do. Frustration made Femi Faneka Yode to go back and embrace terrorists in the name of Shetima. Somebody say, damage control. No, 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 no. You get it wrong. She is not going to, to them for them to do damage control. No, 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 no. No, I disagree with you. I disagree with you. They are not, she's not going for damage control. Rather, they are going to extract something from, they are trying to extract something from her and they will use it against her at the end of the day. They will use it against her they will use it against the family. I want you to understand that so people who can come boldly when, you know, they can come boldly to say that the brother of Mazin Namdekanu is not the blood brother. In this particular situation, they can give poison and they can go to any length because there is no reason for that particular inconsequential and a frivolous claim to come out from anybody that is under oath of IPO. Of course, I was talking about oath. People that, people that uh, you know, uh, sell our leader in Kenya, who, who is, you know, what they cannot do. So I'm just saying that there is nothing, there is nothing that they cannot do. So if you say that I am controlling the damage Yes, I agree with I will agree with you. Because I see what nobody sees. I already know where they are going. And let me also make it very clear. Since the abduction and kidnapping of Mazin Namdekanu, I have never ever spoken with a wife for one day. For one day. In fact, not, not just that, I have never in my life spoken with the wife of our leader. But I will be that distance shepherd. Some of them say when he, she was being insulted by the people I was working with, they call her name, they do this, they do that. I did not fight for her. It is not in every stone that they throw at you, you are going to shout. I choose my fight very, very wisely. I choose my fight. And I choose this one. Because all those nonsense they are saying those times does not hold water. Even then, I defended her. All of them, some of them confessed here on my program. I defended her. And fought those people secretly. They confessed on the program, but not what I'm doing now, because I choose the fight. I don't fight and pick fight anyhow. I fight important fight. So what I'm doing now is a preventive measure. So that, and I know I have succeeded. I have destroyed everything. Believe me. I have destroyed, nothing will come out of that program tomorrow. Nothing. And then, you know, oh, they, why, why, why Simon Ekpa is afraid? What is, and I don't even understand what is connecting, you know, as they say, they are panicking. They are panicking. 
let anybody that want to talk about me talk about me i'm not you know but don't talk about your family don't talk about the family of mazinandi can i continue to hammer it today for the very last time until tomorrow do not talk or discuss about your the siblings of our leader don't discuss about them let us let us be the one to discuss them and do not discuss anything welfare if there is issue of welfare whoever that is you know engineering this particular uh, broadcast where they are going to uh, uh, where where they, where they are going to uh, talk about welfare let the, let it be handled internally if there is any issue of welfare you know uh, there are still people somewhere doing something. So, uh, and we are there. Autopilot are there. If there is issue of that, we are here. We are here and we are ready. We are ready. It, we have taken up this uh, mantle until our leader is out. We are ready and we can take any responsibility. But do not discuss welfare on Radio Biafra. It is a trap they are setting. And this trap we will never catch you, our wife. All right. So let us uh, continue. The reason why I made this particular extra comment is because I want you people to understand what frustration can cause. And especially in Nigeria, where people are into politics as a career. Once they lose the election, they go back to square one. They become beggars. They become political jobbers, just like Femi Fani Kayode. Because there is no reason whatsoever this man is sounding like this and he will go back today and support Tinubu, who is also doing the same thing with, uh, as the people he is condemning here. Let us hear him. What about Chai people is interesting and unique. Instead of rationalizing it, trying to explain it in a way like so many leaders do today, he's ordered that the nine should be fished out and they should be eliminated. They should be killed. And he told his people that he was not ready to accept this type of evil in Nigeria at that time or at any time. It's very decisive. It was a military government, a real soldier. And what happened? All nine of them were killed. Eight of them were killed. But one of them was not killed. The question is why? It's a good question. I'm still asking that question today. I am told that he had such strong connections and that the president was lied to by the IG of police at the time and those that were in charge of what was essentially an extrajudicial killing. Did you hear that? Femi Fanika Yode said one of them of the people that killed Gideon Akaloka was not killed and because they lied to Abacha. And the person that lied to Abacha was the Inspector General of Police back then. Lied to Abacha that they have killed Sanusi. But they didn't kill Sanusi. It is the part of Islamization. Today, Sanusi has become one of the powerful Islamic fundamentalists in Nigeria. So, when you are hearing that no northern Nigeria politician or leader can stop the Fulani invasion. I am telling you today that nobody in Nigeria can stop them. Because you are not going to take over the entire National Assembly. If Peter B become a president, he is not going to take over the National Assembly. You still have to deal with these northern leaders who cannot stop the Fulani invasion. They have to be part of the decision-making decision they have to be part of the amending of the constitution. They have to be part of whatever you want to do. Because as a president, you do not have absolute power. So if anybody is coming here to tell you that you need somebody who wants to reshape in Nigeria, it's all lies. And we are not going to fall for this scam again. 2023 will be the last. We are going to fight Nigeria for our freedom. We will fight Nigeria in 2023 for our freedom. We will start this fight 
by making sure that Nigeria do not conduct election in Biafra land. Now, let us listen. And the man was taken from Kanu because he had strong connections and he was hidden in a Sokoto prison for two years. Abacha thought he was dead. After two years, I won't mention his name here, so nobody needs to have, you know, fast heartbeat and all the rest of it. But everybody knows who it is, but I will not mention his name here. Because it is, it's not appropriate, it's not necessary. It's just illustrating a fact. Now, he was in Sokoto his prison two years. Eventually he was released. Again, people intervened. They approached Abacha and said, well, he has repented. We didn't kill. Allow him to live his life. Okay. And the relatively Is young man was shipped down to Lagos, where he went in, uh, continued his uh, career, went into a career, I won't say which sector, and he flourished and he did very, very well. That... <laughs> I hope you people now understand. He was talking about Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. Forget about all the pretensions. Nobody from the north has the capacity to stop the following insurgency. And because of that insurgency, and the fact that none of them have spoken about it or against it, let us save the country. Nigeria should confess, my brother. Persons, people don't matter. The country should confess. Now, there's more important than anything else. When I hear them shout like this, you know, it pains my stomach. He said nobody can stop the insurgency from the north. So who are going to occupy the National Assembly? Uh, uh, you know, is he planning to have a satanized National Assembly? Or is he going to select, you know, the robot from the northern Nigeria to be the majority of the people at the National Assembly? So how is he going to do that? You see, when you listen to these educated people talk sometimes, you just get irritated. You know, I, I, let, ask them, how do you want to change this Nigeria? They can't answer you. We want Nigeria is bigger, Nigeria is this, Nigeria is that, Nigeria is that. How will you do that? Because whatever you do, it comes from the National Assembly. And if the nobody, if actually nobody can stop the Fulani insurgency from the north, you have the Northern uh, Vice President coming. <laughs> Let us even, you know, assume that. So how will you now fight when you already know that nobody in the North, are you exempting this nobody to be the Vice President of OB? <laughs> or are you exempting nobody to be all the members of the National Assembly from the Northern Nigeria? The people that have fought for over 50 years to be where they are today, from killing Gideon Akaloka, protecting Islamic doctrine till today. They have gone. In fact, now it is even more defined. Abacha killed them. Abacha killed the people who killed Gideon Akaloka. But have the president killed the people that killed Deborah today? The answer is no. In fact, now it is no longer, you know, that time, 1994. The situation was even better because Abacha killed some people. Today, they are no longer killing. Today, the presidential aspirant, the presidency, are hailing the people killing for blasphemy. After how many years? From 1994 to 2022, nobody is killing anybody for killing people for blasphemy. Now, it is they are hailing it. Now, the Abu, uh, uh, Atiba Abubaka, who is uh, running to become a president of Nigeria, is now coming to social media to support the killing for blasphemy. Are, we, are you going forward or going backward? So how are you going to do that? And this article that is supporting the blasphemy, Peter Obi is bowing down for him after he has supported killing of blasphemy, killing of Deborah. Peter Obi is not even feeling ashamed. To bow down to a man who openly supports the killing for blasphemy. An Islamic fundamentalist.
Every Fulani want to take over Nigeria and turn it into an Islamic, Islamic state. So how, so who, you know, because I don't know, this man may be talking about Atiku even, because I don't know whether he's a PDP man. <laughs> because the way he's speaking, he's talking, maybe he's a PDP man, so I don't even understand. So how can this man, you know, differentiate who is going to stop the insurgency, which is the primary purpose of this insurgency, is to take over Nigeria and turn Nigeria into Fulani state, and Fulani nation and Islamic state. So what exactly is he talking about? Let us continue. Let's think about Nigeria. When Nigeria is in Bedouin, in Taraba, in Plateau, these are names. Why should they be IDP camps and foreigners live in their villages? Why should we do that and people keep quiet? Please think about Nigeria first, not about private people who seek power for themselves. It is time for us to look to Nigeria. The governors are met in Lagos, Enugu, and Asaba. Are Nigerians of different diverse ethnicities? Plus, the voice of Governor Otto, who came to represent the indigenous people of northern Niger. This is how we look at it. It is the whole of the country against the Miyaz Allah. That's what we're doing. What, what, where then is the place of merit? Uh, if you're looking for uh, a presidential candidate, someone who can pull Nigeria out from the place you said we are right now, uh, are we not supposed to be looking at? Um, Married, you know, well, you've had what uh, elder statesmen like uh, uh, President Babangida for President uh, uh, Obasanjo. They all said, Look for a young person who understands economics, people with proven records of administrative service. We can find a lot of those young people across southern Nigeria. I don't think that's a big issue. So try and get frightened about the numbers fraud concord by Buhari. When you do election somewhere in the south, you lose to Kagrida. When you do somewhere in the north, you allow them to write numbers, and then tomorrow you say that's a disparity. How come the numbers you show us don't reflect when you put direct satellite imagery? They don't reflect in school enrollment. They don't reflect in a VAT payment. They don't reflect in entertainment activity, they don't reflect in anything except when you do it fraudulently and then you use INEC, whatever you have, to then impose those things. And after some time, you start saying it's true. If you look at the equator, right from Timbuktu, stretching down to Somalia, Nigeria is the only place the army told us more people live in the desert areas than where you have water. It's a fraud. And of course, you present Buhari's meant is deceitful. President Buhari is fundamentally dishonest. And that's why you know nothing about his government should be believed by anybody. We, the PDB, we're actually trying to move the country into some national that can refer to, can read. It he has not destroyed it. Look at it. We'll be All right. He said he's a PDP. So as you can see, and he said nobody from northern Nigeria will stop the Fulani insurgency. So, and Atiku is running. <laughs> Atiku is running. And I've just told you that Atiku is also an Islamic fundamentalist. So the thing is that we can no longer take all this nonsense, you know, this, this rubbish, this scam and fraud. It is going to end next year. And I want the people of Biafra all over the world to come out now to fund the liberation of Biafra. We will continue because no fund is ever enough until Biafra is declared and defended. So, you know, and so you need money, you need fund. So we will continue to call on daily basis. If you think that we have now direction, for those of you who are thinking that you know, is it not an uh, election? Election every time they say no election at the end of the day. We are never going to allow election to take place in Biafra territory. But for us to achieve that, you must be part of this movement. You must support this liberation of Biafra financially. Very important. So that you don't blame us. You have to support and fund the liberation of Biafra.
We are going to liberate Biafra block by block, you know, community by community, uh, 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 town by town, village by village, until there will be no election. In fact, not even INEC personnel will be allowed to enter Biafra territory. I am telling you the fact. So you have to be part of it. We are in liberation. This is a war. They have declared war against us, and we need to defend our land. So we are going to make history. Be part of this history that we are going to make. Be part of this history. And of course, I want to bring something to play as we start to prepare. A moment. But first, a North Idaho family says that their mother. Stay away. Uh, you mentioned Kosovo, is that correct? Yes. Uh, well, you, uh, you mentioned, is that correct? Yes. Maybe you mentioned Albania, and or maybe you are aware of uh, Bosnia as a governor. Do you know Bosnia? Yeah, Bosnia, Kosovo, and uh, South Sudan. You said they went to United Nations, is that correct? Yes. And they got their freedom? Yes. Before they went to the United Nations, did they pick up arms to fight or not? They did. Thank you very much. That's what I want to know. Once you give us guns and weapons, stay in Kuwait, we will fight at home. When we, listen, if you come now to beat me up and you keep beating me, if somebody is walking past, they will say, stop beating him. But if you beat me, I beat you back. When they come, they will say, what is the problem? What is the problem means that you can say your own part and I will say what happened. And somebody can judge. United Nations will not come to help Biafra until we have got tablets. Do you know that? Uh, yes, but uh, I think uh, uh, we have fought this struggle before now. It's not the same. Please, can you tell us, uh, I will tell you why we did not succeed before, because of what you yourself just answered now. You said now that if this is only an evil cause, that it will not work. Is that what you said? Yes. Uh -huh. Now we are bringing and taking everybody along. That is number one. And number two, we stopped fighting in 1970. We went to fight an all-out war which is total warfare, and as uh, somebody from the Air Force who is here, maybe he can help us out. We want to fight them, you shoot and we shoot back at you. The whole world, gang up, Britain especially, Britain knew what we, they know what we can do. And Britain, listen, people don't know the conflict against Biafra. The reason why Biafra has not come is because the likes of Britain don't want Biafra to emerge. If Biafra is standing strong today, every black person on this earth will be liberated. Do you hear what I said? Every black man, including Obama, will become free. But they don't want that. They ganged up against us and they killed our people. We should have continued. The Gulf should have continued. The second damage should have gone into the bush to continue the guerrilla warfare. That was the greatest mistake of all. We went back to go and reintegrate. When I was talking to very heavy players, big men at UN. What they said to me is that you stopped. That means that what you're fighting for is not worth dying for. If your freedom is not worth dying for, then the world cannot take you seriously. 
That is the way it is. So any day, we, if you like, if you listen, if just do us, I don't need your money. Don't you never. What we want from you is one container load only. We will come to you again. Let me tell you, any day they shoot us, police shoot us, we shoot at them. They kill us, they kill them. Believe you me, you and we come in that same day. But if they are only killing you, you and we say, please, can you investigate the matter? Can you investigate it and make sure that all the culprits are brought to justice? Is that not what they will say? But any day police kill us, we keep police back. Then we say, uh, please, what is the problem? What is going on? That time language is not the same. What is going on means they want to hear from the zoo, they want to hear from us. But if they come at us and they go scotch free, they will say to the zoo, please investigate and let us know. Every country you mentioned, the UN came in as they were fighting. For every year that we fought the war, Southern Sudan fought for 10 years. At a point, it became very, very clear to Sudanese that you must let this go. Because they're not going anywhere. They have fought for 30 years, they're not going anywhere. These are the things we need to understand. Hard off. Biafra of the Soviet Union are going to the bush to continue guerrilla warfare. By now, Biafra will be a free country. But everybody went to the buying and selling. You became very selfish. It's just about you and your son and your family. Which is why, go and ask people who are as old as we are that grew up in the village and close to our father and our grandparents or uncles in the village. Ask them, since when did a human start saying, Anama, tell you more about it. The same thing our leader has been begging and appealing for is the same thing I am appealing today. Our leader said he don't need your money. He need container load. Our own is that we need both container load and we need money. Because it is not everything that will be in container. And because we know the container load is no longer attainable. Because you know what is going on. So we need the fund to fight for our freedom. Everybody is needed. We have united everybody. And now it is time to let the dragon flag to continue to go higher, higher, until you hear the national anthem of Biafra. May God bless you. May God bless Biafra. May God bless Odudua. May God bless the Middle Belt. May God bless Amazonia. May God bless Mazina Mexicano. May God bless Sunday Iboho. May God bless our Omoada. May God bless the media team. May God bless every one of you. And of course, Omoada as a husband. May God bless all of you. May God bless those of you who watch this program and make sure that it goes to every cranny of this world. May God bless the new uh, committees, our alliances, those joining the government in exile. May God bless all of you. And may God bless those voluntary or volunteers that are coming for departmental, uh, you know, uh, voluntary work for the Biafra government. May God bless all of you. From here, from me, is good evening.